Compañeros, welcome to another edition of the Singulated Partners podcast. I am Carlos El Chacon. Happy New Year to everyone, depending on where, when you're listening to this. Uh, but we are in the throes of uh, 2023. And I am joined by Mr. Eugene, Eugene Meininger. Howdy, howdy. And Mr. Kevin Fiesel. Hello. Happy New Year to you, gentlemen. And mm-hmm. I, I didn't ask you this earlier, but uh, so did each of you make it to midnight on on New Year's? Was that something you guys? We we weren't planning on it over here because <laughs> we like had a little New Year's Eve friends thing, and we're all like, we're we're in our thirties, we're getting old, we're gonna go to bed. But then we had such a good time that like we were ended up like going home and playing some video games online. And then at a certain point, it's eleven o'clock, and you're like, well, I guess I'll stay up another hour. So. <laughs> We uh, we accidentally stayed up. There we go. We we don't do anything. Um, yeah. But when when is this coming out, Carlos? Uh, Wednesday, the eighteenth. Eighteenth. Oh, okay. Because the twenty second is Chinese New Year, so it could have oh, been the Chinese go. New Year spectacular. There you go. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that might rabbit. be a little bit bigger in your house then, right? You know. No, not really. Oh no. <laughs> It's funny. the The reason that I know so much about Chinese New Year is that um, Steam started consistently doing video game sales on on that day. Oh. So I, I assume it's a big commerce day, like our Christmas or oh, whatever. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a huge commerce run up in in China. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That's funny. But I, the reason I know about Chinese New Year is mostly from the placemats. Hey, you know. You can be educated in lots of different ways. <laughs> okay, our our uh, topic today is going to be snapshot backups, which as a feature is a very interesting right. choice, right, of words, two words to put together. Uh, but and- can we throw in one extra word to make it a lot nicer than, you know, just the two words? Okay, here we go. Which word do you want to add here? T SQL snapshot backups. Ah, okay, very good. That's fair. And maybe maybe because that's the that that would be the way to because uh, the 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 and we'll get I guess we'll get into this, but the documentation does kind of point us there to that. Although the in the new in the feature release, you're just going to see snapshot backups, and so that might actually be a, a better way. I was thinking that you might need to go to actually use the quotes in your search if you want to find this. <laughs> because uh, hilariously, right, as I was uh, taking a peek at this, I ended up on snapshot uh, or you know, snapshots. And on that page, it's like, hey, database snapshots are unrelated to snapshot backups, <laughs> snapshot Correct. isolation of transactions, right. or snapshot replication. <laughs> So you've got you've and, got a couple of uh, of words that get reused in there, and so you have to just make sure you're talk that we're talking about the right the right. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, and also here. snapshot backups are different from T SQL snapshot backups. <laughs> exactly. We'll get into that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'm I'm looking forward to that. Well, <laughs> one of these is much less bad than the other. I'll put it that way. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay, so then with that, right, so for our show notes to make sure that you get the uh, right URLs to the right documentation, uh, we'll do our show notes today at singulatedpartners.com slash, and it's a long one, T SQL snapshot backups. Is there a hyphen or no? No hyphen, all just one, one take. T SQL snapshot backups with an S. Uh, or singulatedpartners.com slash 259. So that hopefully will get you to the to the right place. Okay. Um, and as always, we have a couple of shout outs. And as always, if I mispronounce your name, please forgive me. And just know that you are in a very exclusive club of uh, names that I have not gotten right. Uh, you You know. Yeah, very, 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 very exclusive club. Okay, here we go. Episode 1000, it'll be millions of customers served. Millions of names mispronounced. (laughs) We'll get a sign for it. Don't worry. There we go. That's right. You can look forward to that, compañeros. Okay, so we have Fabiano Amorim, 
Hollis Pep Presley, Angela Mallory, Tim McAlilly, Alexandra Apasao, Kyle C., Steve Powers, Tom Harris, Susan Burdett, Cor- Corky Ford, Jenny Rios, Brock Barnett, Susie Romans, Eric Carlson, Mark Utley, Karen Bousman, Brad Brewer, Tara Mason, Mary Case, Daniela Pandulo, Natalie Mac- McMara, uh, Naveen Kumar Reddy, Joe St. Clair, Pamela Craven, Robert Durham, Chris Jones, Andre Karpov, Lori Jennings, Cade uh, Colgate, Susan Jennings, Mayna, May, 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 stop thinking about it, Mayna, uh, Janati, Joseph Dean, Tim O'Brien, Diana Winley, Michelle Etheridge Hicks, Chris Hogan, Rob White, Paula Winstead, Gus Urilio, Raja Ramachandaran, and Joseph Allison. So thanks, compañeros, for giving us a little shout out or interacting with us in some way on social media. We do appreciate it and uh, hope that you find all of that information, uh, the information we put out there, useful. Thanks to those who have reached out and, and connected with us. Always appreciate it. And I suppose wherever you can like and subscribe our podcast, we appreciate those too. Um, I should remind you, secretlatedpartners.com slash t-shirt, t-shirts. Uh, you can go, it's, it's actually underneath my hoodie today. You can get your very own Secret Partners podcast t-shirt. Uh, they are still available for order if you'd like to uh, help support the podcast. Okay, so... For this episode, we want to talk about the new SQL Server 2022 feature, T-SQL Snapshot Backups. Here we go. (laughs) Now, I feel like, uh, at least my experience, for those of you who are trying to use third-party software, backup software, this feature is really for you. In my mind, um, now there are, and, and I will, I will, um, I will reference a um, Anthony Nocentino post uh, where he talks. He gives another example um, uh, or another usage use case. But basically, right, if you are you know running your backup software, you want to snapshot it at the at the storage level. Um, a lot of times, so it's it's outside of SQL Server, right? They're making the snapshot, and in the SQL Server log, you'll see the IO has been paused on database X. And then a couple of seconds later, it'll say IO has resumed on database X, right? That is the telltale sign that you have had a database snapshot through, generally through some, through some third party. I hear that as some sort of infomercial, like if you've ever had your IOs pause, call the law firm of Fiesel and Meidinger today. There we go. Man, that's not too bad. I might, I might dial that number. Right? Yeah, <laughs> we'll get our class action lawsuit going. <laughs> yeah. So, and it, I guess it's helpful to think to, to, I guess, to walk through. So why is it that we're seeing this? Now, this is coming directly from the Microsoft documentation. Okay, so it's in the past, users have relied on third-party solutions that were built on top of the SQL Writer Service to complete snapshot backups. The SQL Writer Service depends on the Windows VSS or the Volume Shadow Service, along with the SQL Server VDI or the Virtual Desktop Interface to perform the orchestration between SQL Server and the disk level snapshot. Right, backup clients based on the SQL Writer service tend to be complex, and they only work on Windows. So I, I, I thought a couple of a couple of things here, and, um, and and maybe even at the beginning you may have you may have saw that, and you're like, hey, right, snapshot backups, um, hey, snapshot sh- snapshots aren't backups, and I think previously we would have agreed with you, right? We said, you know, hey, you take that, it's frozen. The challenge can be in in them being transactionally consistent. 
yep. right? You take a snapshot, you're in the middle of something big, you try to restore that, and that SQL server's like, uh, I don't know what you want me to do, right? So the the in my mind, the big feature here is that now that marriage, instead of kind of u- using the you know the VSS service to do that for you, now SQL Server is snapshot aware. Dare I say that's kind of a weird a weird word, but um, it's now in the mix, right? We the, through through the T SQL option, right? SQL Server now knows, hey, I'm taking a snapshot. Yeah, so quick summary of where we're at so far. This T SQL snapshot backup available in SQL Server 2022, not prior editions. Yep, new feature. Uh, and it is different from snapshot backups in SQL Server 2005 and later. I think it was in 2005, definitely in 2008. But that that uh, snapshot where you might have your VMware admin or uh, some appliance admin running something like oh we'll take we'll take that sand snapshot or we'll take a vmware snapshot of the database the mdf and ldf files as of a particular point in time like carlos was saying that's not necessarily transactionally consistent there can be things that are in route or in process that between the snapshot of the mdf file and ndf files and ldf files uh there may be some small differences in here which can lead to inconsistency So, right, one of the one of the new the supported one of the changes now is that SQL Server will support the restore of those snapshots and you can restore it in no recovery mode and add logs to it. Treating so, it like a regular full backup. Exactly. That's right. So, I guess um, how how is this <sighs> I, I know they're like we keep appending the word T SQL to it, and I tried to look at the article, but I'm you know I was a DBA years ago, right? So help yeah. me out. Um, how is this different than where before it you know you would have Veeam backup service or something like that, and it would talk with the VSS to tell it to like acquiesce, mm-hmm. and then it would take the the snapshot, right? So it's not like okay, we're just grabbing the file as is and it's crash inconsistent. In theory, it was doing the hey, stop what you're doing, kind of kind of piece. So what what's different here from what we had before or how it worked before? Yeah, so it, so in my mind, right, we've got we've gone around the fire and now we want to sing kumbaya, right? Everybody's kind of together. Oh, okay. Right? So where again, you had the Veeam admin and they were kind of running the, you know, cuz again, you'd go into the databases, you're like, "Hey, you know, how are things going?" You take a look at the log, you'd see that IO resume. "Hey, are you taking snapshots?" "No, no, we're not doing that." Uh yeah, you are. Somebody is, and so right. there was just there was just there was a little bit just of a disconnect. Um, so o- o- arguably, I mean, it's if it, it might be the same thing. Again, I just think that SQL Server's in the loop now, right. and it doesn't necessarily need that VSS r- service to to get it done. Um, yeah, taking you, a little bit further. Um, okay. The, the T SQL snapshot backup process will write out a metadata file, and right, so that. Um, that metadata file does include some information that is going to be helpful for restoration. And uh, my understanding is that's involved with ensuring consistency. So Got it's it. not just right. some external service has stopped I/O, taken the snapshot because you have a SAN level snapshot or an appliance level snapshot or a virtual machine level snapshot. And that those that has been copied, uh, and then okay, we're going to resume everything. So in addition to that, there's also this metadata that gets written to disk, and on restore, you use that metadata as a way of saying, okay, here is the snapshot details, and assuming that those snapshot files exist, cool, we can restore this, bring it back like it was a regular full backup. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So the other piece is that, is that we also get, like, you know, was mentioned, we're now talking about the disk, kind of at the disk layer, so at the hardware layer, whereas before I needed a Veeam, right, or some, some an application to do that. Now, right, my pure storage, my Dell, you know, arrays, the, that software can now take advantage of the snapshots, and I don't necessarily need to go to the, 
server backup level, if you will. That makes sense. Yeah, and one huge advantage here, you, you know, asking why would I care about this at all? Why would I want to do this? Uh, it means that now if your appliance is handling the backups, if your pure storage array does backups, those backups can be uh, orders of magnitude faster than if you're scanning through right. creating a backup the regular way. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little more harmony there, right? And again, SQL Server uh, will acknowledge or acknowledge that backup. Uh, one of the other thing, you know, that one of the other things that you know that that happens is when you do that snapshot, it's actually going to remove the incremental flags, right? So again, as you think about right. how your, you know, the backup strategy. You know, whoever's taking care of the database and who's doing that snapshot backup have got to work a little bit more in harmony, right? Because they're, uh, whereas the the Veeam backup, you take the snapshot, as long as they're not doing logs, they're just doing like, you know, just just the snapshot, then SQL Server, again, is none the wiser. You can start taking your backups and you won't break that chain. Right. It sounds like this, there are a few more considerations there. Yep. And one other nicety that comes with uh, this feature that we haven't seen before is backup groups and backup server. Right. That's right. So backup backup group basically says, um, here, I want to back up databases one, two, three, four, and five all at once. I mean, if right. I'm going to have an appliance level snapshotting uh, solution, I want to take full advantage of it. Like, sure, just sure. snap all of my databases right now. Right. And my applications... Have the, span multiple databases right? yep yeah yep and uh backup server is similar except that that is all of the databases right yeah yeah so again i think you know you for so if you're not on on a on an array a disk array right you know and i think you know i'm not saying that i, w I would say a large percentage of you probably are uh that are listening Right. And there are, you know, there, there could be instances in which, you know, which are not. Um, but it, you're going to get most advantage from this feature if you're using those, you know, those, those arrays. Um, let's see, what else? There was, uh, so I, guess, I guess we've talked about the, the pieces. So you, you can do, um, so we, we mentioned that it will it will clear the um, the differential bitmaps, right? Um, but you can also do copy onlys, right? So that's a that option. Yeah, uh, actually, we probably should talk about one of the warnings that they they give us, which is sure. if you are taking these full backups, you can technically still take differential backups. However, uh, if you start the process and then say, mm, actually, I don't want to take this backup right now. It clears what Carlos mentioned, the differential bit, uh, bitmap. It clears, mm -hmm. here's all the things that have changed. And therefore, the next differential backup you take right. essentially has to do a full scan of the existing database to see what the changes look like. With this solution in place, I'm I would be of the opinion that unless you're taking differential backups explicitly because you don't have the disk space, for uh, regular foals. If you're using this solution, I'd switch to more frequent full backups, knowing that those full backups are hardware supported and will should be extremely fast. Um, I have seen you know demos of pure arrays that are taking backups at absurd rates. Right. And all of that stuff is is essentially handled um as a background process while you can continue going because they they have taken as here is the snapshot of how things look right now and then can work on uh storing that that somewhere storing that on the the appliance right so um if you do differential backups a lot that may change your strategy if you decide to use this feature you don't <laughs> have to you can continue taking regular backups you could continue using the uh, vss service I, I don't I've never liked that service. It's one that I always turn off when I can. Right. But, I agree. Um, if you're taking regular backups and you don't want to change this or you don't have an appliance that can support it, there's no difference in your life. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. 
Um, but if you're taking those snapshot backups, um, you can also do log uh, transaction log backups. You can still stay in sequence. You you can restore a snapshot and then apply log backups until you get to a point in time. So you can get point in time recovery with these, whereas you really couldn't prior to 2022. Right. Got it. Interesting. So one of the again, kind of the I'll call it weird because it's it's un, it's it is different, right, than what I'm used to. Um, so in the SQL, right, to initiate this, you alter the database and then you're going to set suspend for snapshot backup equals on, right, which is what's going to run through and you know uh, invalidate those sequences, right? Was it was it uh, successful? Right? Are you able to issue the script, and then you can do the backup? Um, they do, like as, as Kevin mentioned, right? You're you're writing you're writing out to a you know BKM file, um, and they've introduced a new uh, with I guess the command. What's the word? So the metadata underscore only. Um, again, right to to right size, I guess that file, and give it instructions for the array so that it can figure out what it needs to do. Right. Yeah, so that BKM, that's backup metadata. Uh, that's the file that you're writing. You're not writing .bak, and you're, you're not having to worry about, am I going to split that out over multiple disks? Uh, you're not going to have options like buffer count, max transfer size, anything yeah. block size, number of files. Uh, as far as compression goes, again, that's all handled on the appliance. As far as encryption goes, uh, that's whatever your appliance does, which I'm not sure. Yeah, that, that, so that, that is an interesting question. You bring that up, right? So there was no mention of uh, TDE or anything uh, like that. Um, so I would be that that's probably still a, a question um, to that we need to get into. I, I, I yeah, that's one thing I didn't I didn't test. I didn't look at it. Uh, that, that's an interesting question. Um, so once the backup is done, right, then you can, you know, that it, that it comes back, uh, you know, it's unfrozen. So, um, yeah, I I think, so So we, we talked about backups and kind of using that, right? I mentioned Anthony Nocentino earlier so on his blog post. And again, he so works for Pure Now. And uh, mm. he proposes it as a, uh, availability group seeding option. So instead of taking the backup and restore, right, and doing the logs, you can you can take the snapshot, move it over, restore it, you know, with no recovery. And if you need to keep pumping logs to it, you can keep doing that. Um, and then he has some other specific information in terms of, you know, hey, now I'm trying to you know share between arrays, or you know, there's some security. Uh, on the back end that is, uh, you know, we're outside of SQL Server at that point, and, and now we're just in, in the hardware of what the hardware needs to be able to move those files around and, and get access to that, um, to that to that snapshot, if you will. So yeah, I think um, I think if I'm if I'm one of those vendors, I'm excited about this feature as I looked at it, right? I mean, those are the, those are the ones who had the most information, Dell, Pure, Right, uh, yep. you know, uh, on it. I think this was this was a kind of a I don't know, not necessarily a play to them, but um, they get to be included in the mix. The other piece, however, is that now Linux, right? This is kind of a um, you get oh, yeah. to do these snapshots in in Linux if you're running SQL Server on Linux, because before right. you were using the VSS writer, which obviously is not not in Linux. Yep, or uh, containers. So I mean, the right. containers are running SQL Server on Linux. Yeah. So that means your containerized uh, SQL solutions. Now you can do snapshot uh, snapshot backups for them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so compañeros, if you are using snapshots on a regular backup snapshots on a regular basis, <laughs> right through some third party, are you excited about? Are you excited about this feature? Um, Right. Let us know. What What are your thoughts here? Um, I think yeah, from and, an, an administrator perspective, you'll forgive me, right? For administrator perspective, 
at least being in the know a little bit more and being able to see the T-SQL that gets executed on the system, uh, I mean, makes me feel, you know, a little bit more included, right? Rather than just seeing IO paused, IO resumed. Yes. And if you are concerned about backup performance and you're running SQL Server 2022 and you have the appropriate hardware underneath, it may be worth giving this a try. Um, right. The selling point behind it is that essentially backup performance becomes independent of database size. Whereas the classic backup mm. technique is absolutely dependent on database size. Right. So maybe worth uh, looking into. Yeah, we had a, so once, once upon a time, right, I had a, a system, um, a, um, an OLAP system, right? That was, you know, running a warehouse every night. And of course, you know, it had backup, had databases attached to it. And for whatever reason, every so often when the backup process would run, it would, act, I wouldn't say contend. because It's not like it's blocking necessarily, but there would be just enough overhead that sometimes it would, it would affect the, the process, the cube process, the OLAP processes, so that it, they wouldn't quite be delivered on time when you know when they were supposed to be there for the whatever it was 6 a.m. right so the sales folks could start banging on it and when that happened right you know everybody started losing their mind right um, and so I feel like again that's just another another tweak or another piece of that's another yeah tool that I'd have in my arsenal to be able to combat a scenario like that if I needed to so. Yeah. Okay. I guess last thoughts. Other things. Think, New Year's think, resolutions that you haven't kept up with already, or yeah, right. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I'm I'm happy to see these kinds of quality of life improvements, right? Because at least back when I used to be a DBA back in the old dark days, like it was issues like this that would like cause me trouble, right? Sure where someone else was doing Veeam backups and I'd be like, okay, so do we have backups managed for the service? Like, yeah, we got it. And then you go look and it's like, oh, there's no, we're not managing the backup chain. We're not doing any of that. And right. if I want to do a restore, I need to go talk to Frank in storage. Right. Because I don't have access to the Veeam stuff, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad to, I'm glad to see quality of life improvements continuing. Even if maybe they're not, you know, the kind of flashy things that come up at Ignite or Inspire or whatever sure. I word conference Microsoft has these days. Right. Yeah, uh, it seems like it's worth at least investigating. Uh, check out some demos of it. I know that Dell and Pure both have blog posts on topic. There's a nice article from Microsoft on how to do it. You're only going to be able to do it if you have the right hardware underneath that can accept those commands. But if if that is the case, uh, this is not the same snapshot backup process that we had before so i'd say don't go into it with those biases uh give sure. it a try it may not work it, it may still be troublesome it may not uh, fit in your environment that's okay but right. this isn't the the same thing that you have successfully and correctly railed against for 15 years <laughs> yeah that's right i mean at the end of the day we're still going to pause the io right the database is going to come to a stop for you know, six, eight seconds, 10 seconds, you know, whatever it is. And, uh, you know, for a lot of environments that that can be OK, but uh, for others, you know, it still could be a problem. But yeah, hey, that's that's a good thing to remember that this is not a free lunch. You don't get free right. backups. Right, um, right. I think it would be worth comparing in terms of how long those IOs stay frozen. I've had cases where they were frozen for 50 to 50 to 60 seconds. Oof, which, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that was a problem. That was a problem, but, yeah. But, yeah, depending on how long it stays frozen, it, it may not work in your environment, but uh, still, it's not the same backup, uh, snapshot backup solution that we had before. So right. um, different architecture, different uh, calls, different processes. Awesome. Very cool. good. So. Kevin, all uh, right, excuse me, Eugene, if folks want to, uh, I get, well, let me, let me back up. Thanks, compañeros. I think that's going to do it for today's episode. 
Uh, again, it, uh, let us know uh, your experience with snapshots and what you're looking forward to in this feature. Uh, should folks want to follow up, Mr. Eugene, how do they, how do they contact you? Yeah, I'm SQL Gene on Twitter, and hopefully in the next couple of months, you'll find me on YouTube. Woo! <laughs> oh, there we go. That sounds like a New Year's resolution. Yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Kevin. Well, if you open up the DABM file in a hex editor and you go down to character 46, you're going to find the first character of my social media handle. You're going to need to take the next several DBM files, and then each one in uh, the 46th spot, you will find every single letter that is in my social media handle. So that's how you find me. There you go. Easy. Easy peasy. Right. <laughs> Easy peasy. As long as you have enough backups, uh, as long as you have enough databases. If you run out of databases, can't reach me. Yeah. Not one of the cool kids. And compañeros, you can reach me on LinkedIn. I'm at Carlos El Chacon. Thanks again for tuning in. We do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the SQL Trail. Bye now. Bye. Partners.